Hey guys, Toast here. Welcome to What Made It Great. This is a series where we discuss certain aspects of games that made them great, or even games themselves that were standout experiences, and analyze exactly what it was about them that made them enjoyable. Today we discuss the entirety of the game Planetside 2. There are honestly many, many things that make Planetside 2 an immensely enjoyable game, but in an effort to keep this to a few minutes, I'm gonna try and be as precise as possible. In terms of most modern AAA first-person shooters, Battlefield tends to carry the crown in the minds of many when it comes to large-scale epic battles with fights of up to 64 players and multiple vehicles on the field at any given time. And that's not to say that games in the Battlefield series don't provide really interesting experiences, save for perhaps Hardline in my humble opinion, but Planetside 2 absolutely puts Battlefield to shame when it comes to overall scope of the game and even the battles themselves. The last game in my memory to come even close in size to what Planetside 2 offers was MAG for the PlayStation 3, but even then the game was laid out quite differently and managed to make you feel like you were more a part of sectioned off smaller battles than a really large massive battle. Planetside 2 is divided into four sizable continents with a variety of bases located on each. Battles can range from just a few dozen players to hundreds of players, and those large battles are unlike anything else you'll really experience in a modern first-person shooter. Tanks, land transportation vehicles, air fighters, air transportation vehicles, all swarming objectives trying to take them over for their team with no real limit to the numbers other than each individual player's available resources and willingness to take the driver's seat. The armor columns of dozens of heavy tanks, the fleets of massive air transportation vehicles carrying squads upon squads of players, the front of soldiers pushing inward. These are all things that bring up a feeling of awe in the game, and the fact that these are common occurrences make you feel like you're in a living, breathing battle at almost all times. Planetside 2 has squads similar to the Battlefield franchise, but unlike Battlefield which allows up to 5 players per squad, Planetside 2 has up to 12. To take it a step further, four squads can band together to form a 48-player platoon, in which you not only have a squad leader, but a whole platoon leader as well. Some of the larger outfits, which is essentially the clan system in Planetside 2, will even organize multiple platoons via external voice programs, where you can end up with two or even three platoons working cohesively. Having a lot of content can be great, but what is the point if there isn't enough variety to make the large amount of content enjoyable? Planetside 2, while a first-person shooter at heart, offers a significant amount of variety in playstyles, terrains, classes, and vehicles, allowing players to rarely feel like they're constantly doing the same thing over and over. Each class, while equipped with weapons capable of providing deadly power, have secondary equipment and abilities that make them required for a number of other important tasks in addition to just killing. A few examples being the Medic class, which requires you to pay attention to your allies, providing them both health and revives when necessary, the Engineer class, requiring you to make sure that your teammates are not in need of ammo at any point, and that both your max units and vehicles are well repaired, and the Infiltrator class, which gives you the responsibility of pointing out enemies on the map, as well as hacking valuable terminals for your team to take advantage of. Every class is useful for something other than just killing, which gives you secondary objectives to pay attention to. Available vehicles are various and serve different purposes as well. If you want to wreck havoc on the ground, your faction-specific heavy tanks are second to none. If you want to be the mobile spawn point for your team, pull a Sunderer and deploy it in a strategic spot, allowing your team to push up on objectives. Want to dominate the airspace? Your Empire-specific fighters can be devastating, especially when you have a small squadron of them working together. All require different playstyles and offer a wide variety of ways to approach a situation. Compound this with the fact that as long as you have enough nanites, you can pull one at any base in which they're available anytime you want to. The continents themselves offer quite a bit of variety, not only in that each one is different environmentally, but some feature primarily flatlands, some have large cliffs making for more substantial verticality, some have a lot of trees in the way obscuring lines of sight, where some you can see everything around you at pretty much all times. This means that by simply changing continents, you can drastically alter some of the ways in which you'll need to play to be successful. Now, I'm not sure if this is due to the discipline necessary to be successful in the game, or the amount of communication and coordination required to play together, or just the type of people that are still playing the game after a number of years, but the community in Planetside 2 is not only friendly, but genuinely happy to help new players and offer guidance when requested. 
While people tend to be very loyal to their primary faction and will make jokes toward other factions, overall the level of hostility in my personal experience is pretty low, making for an enjoyable and social experience. This isn't to say that occasionally you won't come across someone who's bitter and angry, of course you will, but the vast majority of the time people tend to be pretty welcoming and kind. In an age where gaming has become more of a social experience than ever in the past, the quality of person you play with can make all the difference in your gaming experience. While it doesn't happen every time, apologies are sometimes given for team kills, thank yous are received for revives, heals, repairs, etc. And when you're in a good squad or platoon, it isn't uncommon for your squad or platoon leader to congratulate everyone on a job well done, or encourage them if they happen to lose an objective. Many outfits also offer nights in which they do training sessions, allowing new players and veterans alike to practice their skills and become more acclimated to the game under the guidance of those who've been playing for a long time. Think of game communities like Call of Duty, League of Legends, Battlefield, or even Overwatch at times. Not to say that there aren't great people in these communities, of course there are, but you're more likely to get very salty, angry, or just overtly rude people in those franchises than I've personally experienced in Planetside 2. As someone who values respect for your fellow gamer, Planetside 2 seems to be a very welcoming place for people like me. Planetside 2 requires its players to learn and understand how to use each of the classes, each of the vehicles, and how to approach each of the situations that the game presents. While players are willing to help you out, the game itself can often be very unforgiving if you haven't put in the time to learn the mechanics. Veteran players will almost always outplay newer players as they have a strong understanding of the base layouts, team coordination, and how their equipped weapons excel. That said, this produces an exciting challenge for newer players to figure out how they can begin to compete with those higher level players. I myself am still considered lower level at only 45 on my highest character, but in putting in the effort over the course of time I've been playing to better understand the weapons I'm using, the bases I'm taking, and the orders I'm given have allowed me to feel more on par with those who've been playing the game since launch. There's still a level of both excitement and satisfaction that comes with finally outplaying a player who's significantly higher level than you, and despite playing this game for over a year, I still have a lot to learn and plenty of room for growth, but I'm excited at that prospect as opposed to overwhelmed. Some people like small team shooters like Call of Duty or Overwatch, some like larger experiences like Battlefield, but if you truly want to experience a scope like no other, then Planetside 2 is where you need to look. A friendly and helpful community, plenty of content, a ton to learn and improve on, and a unique landscape in which to do so makes Planetside 2 a standout game in the first-person shooter genre, and honestly one that I feel is very underappreciated. Sure, it can be daunting to start a game of this magnitude, especially given that the developers, while having improved a little bit, still do little hand-holding to teach you how to be successful with the game, but by learning all you can, taking advice from the community, asking questions, and just being an active part of that community, Planetside 2 has an extremely rich and rewarding experience to present you. The developers are constantly adding new content to the game and making balance tweaks, forcing even veteran players to have to adapt, but this also helps to bind the community together. If you have hardware capable of playing the game, it's worth taking a bit of time to try it out. Planetside 2 is free to play, so short of your time, there's little you have to lose. But I want to know what types of things you think make Planetside 2 a unique and exemplary experience. Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, please leave a like, and if you want to see more content, please subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, this is Toast, and I'll talk to you soon.